he remembered having died. And Buster, his dog, who he just adored, come to realization, has that ever happened to you, come to realization? <laughs> Buster, his dog was there that he loved so much. Beautiful place. Look at this beautiful road I'm walking down. Look at all these flowers. Everything's just great. And he comes around a curve and there's a big gate there. I guess it must be like the pearly gates. The gate's closed, but you can see inside there there's a golden street. And he walks up to the gate and he says, uh, can I get a drink of water? He says, certainly. We'll get you, I'll have somebody bring you a cold drink of water. He says, well, can I get some water for my dog? He says, well, no, we, we don't let pets. What is this place? This is heaven. Well, thank you anyway. He walks on down the road. He doesn't know it's a strange decision to make, but I mean, the road is beautiful and where he's going is just lovely. And he sees another gate on that around the next curve. It's just an old farm gate kind of hanging there. Probably hadn't been closed in years. And there's a fellow standing there by that gate that he can look at and he just tells him a really lovely, wonderful person. And he walks up to him and he says, uh, could, I, could I get some water? And he says, well, certainly. We've got an old hand pump in here at the well. Help yourself. Have all you want. He says, well, what about my dog? He says, well, you'll find a bowl there. Just let him have anything he wants. So they go in. They get all the water they want to drink. And he walks back up to this guy and he just looks at Joey. He says, what is this place? He says, it's heaven. He says, well, I'm confused. I just passed this place down the road and they said it was heaven. He said, oh, you mean the place down there with the beautiful gates and the gold roads and everything? He said, yeah. He said, no, that's not heaven, that's hell. He said, well, aren't you a little sore at them for stealing your thunder and stealing your name and stealing all the things that you're known for? He said, no, actually, they do a great service for us. They separate out those who would abandon their most faithful I'm going to read from Romans today. Romans 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Oops, that's me. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves His love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely than now that we have been justified by His blood, will we be saved through Him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more surely having been reconciled, will we be saved by His life. But more than that, we can boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the Word of God the people. You know, for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about fellowship and attendance, attendance in church. Last week, we talked about uh, could you not tarry one hour. We talked about the fellowship and the joy of being here and what we gain by being with our friends in church. We look for people in church and we look for people in the rest of our life that we can trust and we can turn to and need. People we can count on. People that we know will be there when we need them. We're looking for faithful, 
companions. People will stick with us. But you know, time marches on. People change. Things happen. People relocate. People make other decisions about who they want to associate with. We trip on our ego. And a wonderful friendship comes to an end. We pay, play carelessly with our words, our integrity. A beautiful love affair dies. Or we just get old. We just get old. And that's when it looks to us like in our lives we most need all those friends and those associates. There was an old man that was at a funeral out of the cemetery. As he watched the remains of one of his few remaining lifetime associates being lowered into the ground, he got into a conversation with the pastor that he conducted the cemetery of the funeral. And they kind of started walking around the cemetery a little bit. And he, had, he walked with a cane. And he said, you see that gravestone right there? Boy, I had a crush on that little girl back in school. She was the prettiest thing. Man has told me the story about seeing Sandy for the first time coming up those steps right there in this church. What a joy to have them here today. You see that tombstone over there? That fella, he, he ran a store in town for years and years. He helped out so many people that would get in trouble, would get in a problem. He'd help them out. I'm sure a lot of them never paid him back, but he helped them out. That couple over there, my wife and I used to sit on their porch on a warm summer evening, drink iced tea and chat and visit. You know, preacher, I've got more friends out here at the cemetery than I do back in town. So, dear hearts, who are we going to turn to? As our life changes and our situations changes and our age changes, who are we going to turn to for a companion that will be with us forever? Who is it? There is one who wants to be our faithful companion through eternity. That would be our Heavenly Father. The priest noticed a woman coming into church every day. She comes into church and she pray. Every day you see her in there. She comes in, she sit down. By herself, she'd pray for a while, and then she'd leave. Well, one day he was out in the vestibule, doing a little, some little something, and she walked out to leave, and he started chatting with her. She seemed like a lovely lady. And they talked for a while, and then finally he said, you know, I've, I've noticed you coming in. You must have a very close relationship with your Lord. And she said, yes, God is very fond of me. <coughs> She wasn't being arrogant. She wasn't doing anything like that. She knew that God loved her without limits, just as He loves each and every one of you without limits, unconditionally. He even loves me unconditionally. I don't have a clue. But I'll take it. I'll take it. We need our worldly friends. We need our relationships. We need our romances. We need our spouses while we have them during our lives. We need someone we can count on. There was a time for sure that Kathy could not count on me. There was a time that there is no way in the world she could have counted on me, but she could have counted on her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it was her friendship, her friendship with God that saved my worthless butt. Her friend.